Welcome to Children's Chapel Online. We are part of St. Patrick's Episcopal Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and we're very happy to have you with us today. Today is a very special day for Children's Chapel Online. Today, Children's Chapel Online, let's see, how many times have I said that? Three, we'll count how many times I say that. <laughs> today, we are going to be seen by children, that's you, and parents and others around the Diocese of Oklahoma. The diocese is the group of Episcopal churches in Oklahoma. So all of the churches all around Oklahoma make up what is known as the diocese. And so today, many of you may be watching this for the first time. My name is Justin Dixon, and I am the youth minister at St. Patrick's in Broken Arrow. We are very happy and excited to have you with us. And over the next coming months, we are going to hopefully spend a lot of time together worshiping God, but also we're going to see different things. We're going to sing songs. We're going to say prayers. We're going to invite other people from around the diocese to participate, teach lessons, play songs, do crafts, show you different churches like I'm standing at the altar at St. Patrick's here in Broken Arrow today. So we are very happy and excited to have you with us today. We have a liturgy, which means that we do things a certain way here on Children's Chapel Online. That's the fourth time. <laughs> oh, we like to be really silly and have a lot of fun too. And so we say the prayers we say a creed, we say a confession, we have a lesson, we sing a couple of songs, and then we do something special each and every time. But as I said, we also like to have lots of fun. So let's get started. I'm, as I said, I'm at, on the, the altar at my church of St. Patrick's, and there's something different here today. And I'm wondering, now, I know many of you don't know St. Patrick's, but I bet if you look, you would see something that is a little bit different that's standing out. Look around the altar here. Now, I know you see the poinsettias, and we have those because it is the Christmas season. What else? Some flowers, candles. Those are kind of common at the altar, right? Are you seeing anything right over? Let me get there. Let me get there here. What is that exactly? Well, during the Christmas, the Advent and Christmas season, up until the season of Epiphany, our altar guild, those are a group of people who set up the church and get it ready for our services, for our worship services. Well, what they do beginning in Advent, do, do you know how many Sundays there are in Advent? Four. That's right. Good job. So on what we call Advent 1, or the first Sunday of Advent, they set some figurines out on our altar on the back wall. Let's go see who they are, okay? So here are the beautiful figurines. Can you tell who they are? Let's see. Advent 1, so that's the first Sunday. And there's four of them. What happens after Advent? Do you know what season comes? What day specifically comes? Christmas. And so around Christmas time, let's see, Christmas, what are we celebrating on Christmas? The birth of Jesus. And so there's what's happening in the biblical story is, is that Jesus's mother and father are traveling somewhere. Do you know where they're traveling? Bethlehem. Good job. Awesome. So this, these are figurines of Mary, Joseph, and the donkey that the biblical story, the story in the Bible, talks about that they, that she rode on the way to Bethlehem. I bet you're kind of playing the story through your head. So it's really neat. And what our altar guild does is they set this out and they move them 
along our backsplash of our altar every Sunday through Advent. Then they arrive at Bethlehem, and we'll talk about more about that story in a minute. But I wanted to show you these because as you're sitting in our nave, you can look and see them on the backsplash here on the back wall. So the first thing that we do in our worship service is we say an opening prayer. And I'm going to put the words up on the screen so you can say it with us, okay? So you'll hear my voice saying the prayer, and then you say it at home with us, all right? So let us begin by saying our opening prayer. Dear Lord, our hearts are open to you. You know everything that we want, and we can't keep any secrets from you. Send your Holy Spirit to make our hearts clean so that we can love you and worship you forever. Amen. So on the second Sunday of Advent, also known as Advent 2, Mary and Joseph and the donkey are moved up to this next wall. So they started over here and now they move here. So it's really neat when you're sitting in our nave where everybody sits as they're facing the altar, you can see Mary and Joseph kind of move through the progression on their way to Bethlehem. And so this is where they reside in the second Sunday of Advent. Now we will sing our first song. As all of the children know from St. Patrick's, I love Advent songs. And then the next season is what? Christmas. Who doesn't love Christmas songs? Well, Epiphany has a song that I love. It has many songs too, but one specifically. And we are going to also see their figurines in a moment, but it is called We Three Kings. And hopefully you know this one, but if not, that's okay too. I am going to play it and I'll put the words up and you can sing it along as we sing the song, We Three Kings. Sing along with me. So this is where we usually record Children's Chapel from. You'll kind of get to know this space. Of course, Sometimes, and a lot, I like to venture out when it's not as cold as it has been. So, as I mentioned, we're going to sing an Epiphany song for the season of Epiphany. It's called We Three Kings, and it's talking about the three wise men. And so, I really, really enjoy this song, and I thought I would bring a beat in with us. So, are you ready? All right, let's do it. Sing along, and I'm going to put the words up on the screen for you. One, two, three, one, two, three. Wonderfully. I just love that song so much. This time of year has such awesome music. <laughs> it's just a lot of fun to sing all those songs. Uh, two weeks ago in Children's Chapel, we didn't have it last week, uh, but we spent the entire time singing Christmas songs because why not? There's so many of them and they're so awesome and fun to sing. 
I hope you've enjoyed that. And I hope that you are enjoying all of our music that we do here in Children's Chapel Online. Ding! I said it five times. I don't know why I keep saying it, but it keeps coming up. <laughs> okay, so in Advent 3, and by now I bet you're like, yeah, Justin, that's the third Sunday in Advent, <laughs> is we move Mary and Joseph up to what would be, I guess, the right wall here at the top. And then there's Advent 4 and then Christmas. So, but wait a tick. There's something over here. What is that? Let's go take a closer look. These are our wise men. How many of them are there? One, two, three. And they each have a camel. Isn't that cool? Hey guys, love your song. <laughs> so on Advent, where were we? Three. Three. Then we move, we begin the trek or the wise men as they move towards Bethlehem. Do you remember that story? They saw the star and they were tracking it. Oh, we did our Christmas pageant this year and some of our wise men were so awesome. One of them is named Henry. Hi, Henry. And he was pointing at the star and smiling. It was awesome. Um, our pageant, all of our kids did such an amazing job. It was awesome. The wise men were traveling in search of the Christ child. They knew that someone was being born and they were following a star. So this is where they begin their journey to find Christ. All right, so now we are going to hear a lesson. Our lesson this week is from Adrian and Ben Gatewood, and they do some really cool lessons. It's called Stop Animation. Stop. <laughs> and what they do is they move someone and they take a picture and then they move it again and they take another picture and they move it again and they take another picture and that's why it's called stop animation and they tell a story about it and so they're going to tell us actually the story from last week's gospel about jesus visiting the temple so let's listen up and see what ben and adrian have to teach us does that sound good guys oh oh <laughs> Tabletop Productions presents a gospel movie from Luke chapter 2, Young Jesus at the Temple. Now every year, Jesus' parents celebrated a holiday like many of us just did. No, it wasn't Christmas. Jesus and his parents and many of the Jewish people would go to Jerusalem to celebrate the festival of the Passover. <laughs> And one year, when Jesus was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. The reason they always went to Jerusalem was that that was where the temple was. And righteous men would sit around and discuss the law for hours. When the festival was over and everyone started to go home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Mary and Joseph started on the journey home for a whole day before they missed Jesus. They looked for him on the road among their friends and relatives, but they did not find him, and they were very upset. They returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking questions, and all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and answers. His astonished mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been searching for you. Jesus answered, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be doing my father's work? But they did not understand. Then he went with them back to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. May you also treasure these things in your heart. Remember, if you ever feel that you've lost sight of Jesus, you can look for him and find him wherever the work of the Father is being done. Wasn't that cool? <laughs> 
I love how they build those and, and put them together and everything. So uh, Adrian is our teacher and Ben is her son. Um, he just turned 14 recently. And so he does, as you saw in the credits, uh, that he does all of the animation and moving everything. Just such a neat and cool way uh, to hear a lesson. Don't you agree? Now we have, let's see, where are we? Do you remember where we are in the season? Advent one, two, three, oh, four, Advent four. So you can see behind me, uh, Mary and Joseph right here, whoop, whoop, right there is the donkey and whoop. I can't even point at him here. There we go. The donkey, Mary, and Joseph. And they are just about, so you can't see what's off scene over here. They're about to reach Bethlehem. Then we have our wise guys up here. So we have our candles and our wise men. And they are now making the journey all the way through here. So imagine coming here to church each Sunday and they have moved across the backsplash. It's really neat. It's really neat and really fun to see and watch. And I'm glad that all the wonderful people of our altar guild do that for us. Now we're going to say our creed together. And so I'm going to put the words up on the screen and you can just say it along with me at home. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Oh, hello, fancy meeting you here. <laughs> so now we are on the right top of the wall the backsplash behind the altar here and our wise men have moved along okay something that's really neat as i'm kind of getting prepared for this was do you see the shadow of them over here <laughs> isn't that cool you can make out the camel and the wise men over there that's pretty neat so at the christmas eve service the wise men and their camels are on the top right part of the wall Mary and Joseph have made it to Bethlehem. And so I can't see the cameras too far away, so it looked like they were blocking me. <laughs> the wise men will keep journeying on their way to see the Christ child, and the Christ child will be born tomorrow, which is what Christmas is named after. The day of Christmas is named because Christ was born on that day. It's also known as Christ Mass. And so now what we're going to do in our service is we are going to say the confession. I'm sure that you probably hear and potentially say the confession at your church. I'm going to put the words up on the screen like I have, and then we can all say it together and you can say it at home. All right. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. On the first and second Sunday of Christmas, the wise men move to the lower, uh, what would be left-hand wall. And I'm getting mixed up, right-hand wall. <laughs> You're gonna throw confusion at me here. Uh, the lower, what would be right-hand wall. And, but also, as I mentioned a minute ago, at Christmas Eve service, oh look, our banner has the manger on it. Isn't that beautiful? 
the Christmas Eve service, Mary and Joseph, sorry, I'm walking a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't make you dizzy. They move over to the manger scene. And so we have our shepherds here. Here's our shepherds. We have some animals and there's a shepherd over there as well. And as you can see, baby Jesus is in the manger there. Of course, that wouldn't be until Christmas Day, but on Christmas Eve service, this is where Mary and Joseph come without Jesus in the manger. All right, we're going to sing another song, and this one, I'm guessing every single one of you will know, and it has motions. I thought I'd do one that's really well known, so if you stand up, Mom and Dad, you can stand up as well, and we are going to sing Peace Like a River together. So stand up and do the motions and sing it loud with me. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. you guys did an awesome, awesome job on that. Thanks for singing it with me. And lastly, we have Epiphany, the day of Epiphany, which is celebrated on January 6th. So something else that we hadn't talked about, uh, but on Christmas Day, from there, there are the season of Christmas is 12 days long. And so that always leads up to 12 days at past Christmas is January 6th, um, is the next day after the 12 days of Christmas, and that is the day of Epiphany. That is when the wise men here arrive at the manger, or to see Christ. And uh, so what we're seeing here, this is called a creche. And uh, this is a displaying of the nativity. So anytime uh, there is a displaying of the nativity, the word that they call that is a creche. I just learned that myself. <laughs> and so on Epiphany, this is what the scene looks like. Our, uh, sorry, Mary and Joseph and the donkey traveled all the way across from the altar over here to the creche. And they were followed by the wise men and their cam camels. And this is our nativity scene. Pretty neat. Something about these is um, the church, our church, St. Patrick's here in Broken Arrow, it was two churches many, many, many years ago, even before I came here. And uh, it was St. Columba and St. Andrews. And some people from one of those churches actually painted all of these beautiful figurines. It's very neat that they've been around that long. Uh, that's 25 years, maybe, something like that. And so a very long time. And people have been 
religiously putting these things up and moving them to celebrate these seasons that kind of coincide with the birth of Christ. So now in our service, what we're going to do together is we are going to say the Lord's Prayer, except we're going to sing the Lord's Prayer, the call and response version. So I'll explain it in just a second. Join in and sing along as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Thank you so much for joining us for Children's Chapel Online. You can worship with us every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. We release Children's Chapel Online uh, through St. Patrick's, and also now the Diocese of Oklahoma will be releasing it also. And so join us as we sing songs and we hear lessons and we say prayers, but we also laugh a lot. We see some neat and cool things, and we learn about our faith. And then sometime soon, we are going to have other people from around Oklahoma, from around the diocese, who are going to teach us lessons and sing songs and show us their church and do crafts and all kinds of very neat things. I know it's different. I know it's it's odd that we are worshiping online like this, but this is where we're at. We're in the middle of a pandemic of a virus. And so I'm kind of happy that we have a chance to experience this and share this together. I am grateful that you are here and that you get to know me and so many others as they come and help me out with Children's Chapel online. And then one day I may get to meet you and see you and you'd be like, do you remember when we were worshiping together in Children's Chapel online (laughs) back in 2020 and 2021? (laughs) So join us each week. I would love to have you worship with us here. I look forward to meeting you all one day. Love to you all. I hope you are doing well. I pray that you are doing well. I hope you're taking care of yourselves. And in doing so, you are taking care of others. Now, as we say each week to end Children's Chapel Online, well, first, I hope to see you next week. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.